Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video 17 and we're going to be looking at the properties of alcohols in a little bit more detail in this particular video. So the purpose of this video is to help you to start to look at some of the variations in properties that occur within and between homologous series of alcohols and when we look at that, that we reference both intermolecular and intramolecular bonding that is present. So here's an opportunity for us to have a little bit of a look at alcohols in terms of both what's happening within and between. And the, the chemistry Libretex is very, very good for explanations of some of these. And that's where this particular um, diagram has come from. So what we need to do is we need to look at some of the properties of alcohols that we can explain on the basis of intra or intermolecular bonding. So intramolecular bonding is what happens within the molecule. And most of the time, what we're looking at here are the chemical bonds. And that means that we're looking specifically at things like the fact that they will be covalent and they may or may not be polar. And that's going to have an effect on not just their chemical properties, but potentially also the physical properties. The intermolecular bonding is the bonding between adjacent molecules. So this primarily affects the physical bonds or the physical properties uh, of each of these different uh, compounds and so then we're talking about things like melting point, boiling point, appearance, solubility, hardness, all of that sort of stuff. That's part of the physical properties. We need to be able to explain those and so these are the um, intermolecular forces and in the case of alcohols we have non-polar bonds that we find as part of the molecule and therefore dispersion forces are going to be important. But we also have some polar bonding occurring as well. And so in those cases, we're also going to find that there's going to be some hydrogen bonding um, as a specific component of, or an example of the dipole-dipole interactions that can occur here. So you can see on the diagram that the hydrogen bonding is what's actually linking two molecules to one another. The bond that occurs between them is a polar covalent bond and it's within the molecule. So within this molecule all of these are covalent bonds but only this one here shows this level of polarity. We would expect some polarity between the carbon and the oxygen as well. And really that's reinforcing the um, slight negative region around the oxygen. We also know that the oxygen has two pairs, so four electrons that are unbonded and four electrons in bonds, so two that the oxygen had as part of its valence shell and also one from each of the other substances that it is uh, bonded with. So one from the carbon and one from the hydrogen. This polarity creates uh, regions of dipoles. So where we find an oxygen and a hydrogen that are bonded within a molecule, we find this charge separation, this dipole, which is a result of charge separation. Now the dipole is a permanent dipole, not a temporary one. And that's the main difference between these temporary dipoles and permanent dipoles. And of course, the specific example of hydrogen bonding is where those permanent dipoles have actually involved hydrogens as part of that bonding. And there's only a small number of atoms um, that hydrogen bonds to that it shows this character with. And certainly carbon is not one of them. So therefore we can look at explaining some of the properties of uh, alcohols and certainly some of the different types of alcohols on the basis of the polar bonds or non-polar bonds that we see within the molecule and also the um, 
intermolecular bonding in terms of both dispersion forces and hydrogen bonding that occurs between the molecules. Now one thing that is going to affect this um, just as it did with the hydrocarbons was chain length. The thing with chain length is that in our small alcohols such as uh, methanol, ethanol, those uh, that that polar region that we get created around the hydroxyl group um, dominates the interactions between the different molecules. As the carbon chain increases, so if we get to something like octanol, we now have a very long chain of carbon, 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 hydrogen bonds. So now dispersion forces are going to be very important in holding those very long molecules to one another, despite the fact that we also have hydrogen bonding occurring where the hydroxyl groups are found. What sort of an effect does the hydroxyl group have on boiling points and does it differ when we look at different types of alcohols? So I think one of the interesting things and potentially the way you'll be asked this in questions is to look at some data and to see if you can identify or describe any trends that you see in that data and then explain them. So what we can do is we can look at four different alcohols, all of which have the hydroxyl group, all of which are relatively close in terms of their uh, molecular mass. So therefore, mass isn't a big factor here that's contributing to any change in the boiling point. So there must be something else. And really, with each of these groups, the main difference between them is the position of the uh, hydroxyl group. In, in two of these, there's also a slight change in terms of the distribution of carbon atoms, uh, and that also has a small difference. So let's have a look at each of these. So the first one is butanol. So for butanol, we have the OH group on the end carbon because it's butanol. So I draw the OH group sitting out there on the end carbon. So the boiling point is affected by the interactions between different molecules. So therefore, there's going to be a polar region here and there's going to be non-polar interactions at this end of the molecule. So we're going to be dominated by dispersion forces here and hydrogen bonds here. The hydrogen bonds are stronger and therefore there is a stronger hold between each of these. Now we, we have looked previously at the fact that butane, for example, is still a gas at room temperature. Its boiling point is close to zero degrees. So it's still a gas at room temperature, but butanol is a liquid. And in fact, it doesn't become a gas until it reaches 117 degrees. So this is a, a very strong bond that's being created as a result of the hydrogen bonding between these molecules that holds them together and requires more energy in order for that to break. But what happens if we create a chain isomer where we move one of those carbons from the end to a central place? So that's what we would get for methylpropanol. So now because it's propanol, it's going to have three. It's propanol, so it's going to have the OH group on the end. And it's also going to have a methyl group. So this molecule is now a little more compact. That means that the long section where we had dispersion forces in butanol, now the um, hydrogens are a little bit harder to reach. They're harder to sort of get closer together. So that means that the bonding between different molecules is going to be slightly less. And that lowering of the number of dispersion forces per molecule between different molecules of methylpropanol is going to slightly drop our boiling point. So changing the uh, position of some of those carbons in order to change the length of the chain does have a small effect on the boiling point. What about changing the position of the uh, OH group? So in butan-2-ol, we can compare butan-2-ol with our original butan-1-ol. And again, I'll leave these hydrogens out for the time being. 
just so we can get a sense of what's happening here. So in the second case, or in this third molecule, sorry, I now have the OH group, which has moved from an end carbon to a central carbon, one of the ones off the end. This means that I would classify it as a secondary alcohol, not a primary alcohol. But when I compare it to the primary alcohol, you can see that these two values are not the same. And in fact, just relocating, creating a position isomer by moving the functional group from an end carbon to one from the end has actually dropped the boiling point. The availability of attraction for that hydroxyl group, for that hydrogen bonding between adjacent molecules is slightly less when it's a little bit more protected. When it's kind of hidden a little bit more in the center of the molecule, there's, there's just slightly less opportunity. Now we're not trying to explain a big difference between the boiling points here, but there is a difference and we do need to be able to explain what that is. And you can see in this case that the boiling point has dropped so the BP is less, and that's simply a, a, a function of the fact that that functional group has moved from an end carbon to one of the second carbons. And that's going to reduce the overall impact of that polar bond. What about a tertiary alcohol? Well, a tertiary alcohol is probably easiest compared with our primary alcohol, um, our methylpropanol. So the only difference between these two is that the OH group, which is was on the first carbon, is now on the second carbon, the same carbon as the methyl group. I'll pop a few more hydrogens in here just because I started this one off. So now with this final one, you can see we have a tertiary alcohol because the carbon attached to the OH group is attached to three other carbons. And the OH group itself is actually now caught almost in the very center of this molecule. That further diminishes the opportunities for hydrogen bonding to occur. And because we already know that if we relocate carbons from an end to a center, we're compressing the molecule into a smaller space, and that provides less opportunities for dispersion forces. So in this case, two moves have actually created a compound effect in the change of boiling point. So the fact that it's more compressed and the fact that we've moved the functional group from an end carbon to a central carbon has further affected the boiling point. And you can see it's come down to the lowest of all of those in this table. We know that these boiling points are not affected by mass because the molar mass of all of these is the same. You can go through and work out what the chemical formula, the molecular formula for each of these, and you'll see it's the same for all four of these compounds. And yet the difference is there are uh, clearly there to see in boiling points as well. So what we need to do is make sure that we can explain differences that we see in properties on the basis of both the bonds that are occurring within the molecule, so the, usually those will be chemical bonds, but also the nature of those bonds in being polar or nonpolar, and also the intermolecular bonds between the different molecules in which we're going to be talking about in these cases for alcohols, both dispersion forces and the number of dispersion forces per molecule and also the hydrogen bonding that occurs between the hydroxyl groups of adjacent molecules and also how easy it is for those uh, hydroxyl groups to bond together. So this sort of question is I think the sort of thing that's likely to come up when you're looking at the properties of organic compounds. So it's worth just every now and again having a look at a few different compounds, compare their boiling points or their melting points and see if you can identify reasons for any differences. And thanks for watching.